protecting cash flow in your agency is easily the highest priority when you first jump into the agency game. And this is more for some of my, yeah, I, honestly, it's not even for beginner agency owners. Like this is for agency owners in general, because I know a lot of successful agency owners, uh, or I'm sorry, successful. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, I did, I did the famous little quotation marks around successful, right? Um, agency owners that generate a lot of revenue, top line revenue who do not protect cash flow appropriately. Now, protecting cash flow really has a lot to do with your risk tolerance as well, right? If, if, if you want to play a risky game, then ignore your cash flow, right? But if you're wanting to play the safe game, the low stress game, the uh, I'm going to take care of my employees at all costs game, then cash flow is going to be very important for you guys to pay attention to. For your cash flow to stay in a safe spot, well, you have to start building some sort of bank, right? Some sort of what we call like a slush fund or a reserve. Uh, and for us, we kind of call it like our operating expense reserve that we can last in our business at a minimum three months without making a single dollar, which is such a worst case scenario, right? When When is the last month that you guys actually generated zero dollars into the business? It, it's probably been quite a while, right? And so we're talking worst case scenario. If we bring in zero dollars, our business would be able to withstand three months of of operating expenses so we could pay our team we could pay ourselves we could pay all our software and still operate when generating zero dollars in revenue for our business we do things a little bit differently we do six months and sometimes six months is not uh, uh too much of a safety net right now we like to play things safe uh we like to have security uh in our cash flow and know that we have cash for the bank when needed and sometimes that cash can go towards growth but we know that that safety net is there for us and so we can come into each month with a very clear mind. Even if we had a little bit of an off month, say we drop you know, 10% in revenue or something along those lines, then we know going into that next month, even though we're still profitable at that decrease, uh, we know going into that month that there is a cash buffer that will protect us at all costs, even if we took a loss. Now, our businesses haven't taken a loss in three years um, ever since we started the company. So uh, it's never been the case. But if it were the case, then there would be a cash buffer there uh, just in case. Now, at a minimum, my recommendation is, is always three months, right? Have three months of cash of operating expenses in place. Um, it, it is really the safest thing to do for the business. It is the smart thing to do for your business. And it's a smart thing to do, especially when you hold the responsibility of having a team because that is one of the most important things uh, to protect is of course your team, but also your own livelihood, right? And, and making sure that you can pay yourself and continue to live a consistent lifestyle. Uh, same thing with your team, right? Like the worst thing, the worst feeling in the world, and luckily I've never had to deal with this, is not having the cash flow to pay your employees. Uh, and if you've ever run into that, I'm sorry, like it's not a fun feeling I'm sure to run into, but it is avoidable. It is avoidable if you're if you're smart with your cash flow and you're smart with your hires. Now, when it comes to hiring in an agency, it is always the last resort to hire, in my opinion. Right now, some people will probably battle back with me on this of like, well, you can't can't scale without people. True, true. But uh, at the same time, we shouldn't be in a rush to hire people. Right. We should always look to optimize. We should always look to try to keep our headcount as low as possible. You know, it's become this thing in the agency space that, oh yeah, like we have a hundred plus employees, right? That's the cool thing. High headcount is the cool thing. It's really not. Uh, I think the cool thing is how low can our headcount be at uh, at the revenue rate that we're currently at? Because I'd be way more impressed if someone said, hey, we're at a $10 million run rate at 30 employees versus, hey, we're at a $10 million run rate at 120 employees, right? That's that's impressive. That means you're bringing probably a lot to the bottom line and you're also paying your employees probably pretty well, right? Because if, if the company's winning, probably everybody's winning. If, if you're a good business owner, some people won't pay their employees well, but that's kind of the idea behind it is like, what can we do in order to keep our top line revenue high, keep our headcount low and keep our profits in a really good and secure place. And really the only way to do that is be calculated with the first hires that you bring on, right? And so with that being said, like everyone has a little bit different risk tolerance. And, and I think that's the key concept here is like, hey, what's your risk tolerance when it comes to growth and scale? Um, I think at, like the best thing that you can do is have some sort of, of 
operating expense buffer. And if you don't currently have one, it's something to work towards, right? And an easy way to do this is just take a percentage of your profits. It, it really, it's, it's very business fundamentals, but take a percentage of your profits, start storing that away every month. We didn't get to six months in operating expenses in our bank account by, you know, uh, just wishing it there, right? We had to be very diligent on it and make sure that every single month we were stacking a little bit away, stacking a little bit away. And eventually we got to a place where we didn't have to stack it away. And when you don't have to stack away cash anymore, it's going to provide some opportunities for a few things. One, it's going to let you, one, feel good about giving raises to the team. Two, uh, you can increase your operating expenses at that point, knowing that you have the cash buffer available. So it'll make you feel more comfortable when bringing on a team, when bringing on new software, when you're having to pay for that mastermind, right? Knowing that there is a buffer uh, in your bank account for that. And then lastly, one of the most important things is you're going to be able to pay yourself more as a founder. And uh, one of the things that uh, I want to persuade founders, if, if you're starting an agency, if you're running an agency for, for a while now, um, man, I, I don't know where it came from, but for some reason, uh, founders started to take a backseat to their own pay. Um, when you are not compensated well as a founder, and as an individual and, and the person running the company, you're not filling your own cup. And it goes back to the very common uh, nomenclature that if your cup is not full, right, it's hard to fill the cups of other people. So fill your cup first and, and then, of course, take the overflow and, and fill other people's cup with it. But it's like those are the things that, that are a byproduct of you keeping cash flow in a really good and healthy position. And so I encourage you guys, if you learned anything from this episode today, uh, get your cash right. If you get your cash right, your business will function a lot a lot better uh, and your, your mind will be a lot clearer on making decisions on when it is time to have to dip into those operating expenses a little bit more and to have to increase your overhead. Um, it's going to bring a lot more clarity and a lot more comfort in doing that. Hope that's helpful for you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.